Hey, Rebecca, is Grandpa behaving himself lately? Well, yeah, he's pretty much the same and just chilling in bed, catching up on some rest. Don't worry too much. I'll make sure to keep an eye on him. Remember to keep Grandpa in check and make sure he doesn't go off on his own again. Ever since he hurt himself in the garden, he's been causing a lot of trouble for our family. It's seriously annoying how he keeps forgetting that he's in his 80s and tries to tackle things that are way beyond his abilities. Gosh, old people can be such a nuisance. I wish they'd think about those of us who have to take care of them and give us a break. Ryan, why are you talking like that? It's not exactly a nice way to say about Martin. Oh, no worries, Rebecca. You know how much he's been slipping lately, right? Ever since he retired and passed the company on to my dad, he hasn't been himself anymore. Honestly, I can't handle the fuss of old people. But you're a pro at it, so I'm sure you'll handle taking care of Martin just fine. Well, I don't mind at all taking care of Martin. But it's important to remember that he also longs for the presence of his children and grandchildren. He wants them to be there for him, to shower him with care and affection. No way! I ain't got time for that. You know Martin already handed the company over to my dad, right? Sooner or later, my old man's gonna pass the torch to me and make me the boss. Until then, I gotta buckle down and work on honing my leadership skills to ensure I can steer the company towards success. I understand. But it wouldn't hurt to kick back with Martin every now and then and see how he's doing, you know? Your grandpa really misses hanging out with you. He often reminisces about the good old days when you two would go fishing or take a stroll in the park. You used to have a lot of fun hanging out with Martin, right? Oh, come on. Don't give me that sentimental stuff. You realize it's been like over 30 years since those good old days you're bringing up, right? I mean, seriously, do you expect me to stay Grandpa's little kid forever? We all gotta grow up, and that includes you too. So let's cut out the nonsense and get real here. I'm sorry, but can I just share my honest thoughts on this? Tell me then. We're husband and wife. No need for all that formal talk between us. Look, I gotta be real with you. It seems like everyone in our family has been acting differently towards Martin ever since he retired from his top job as a chairman at the company. I gotta say, it's hard not to notice that you've been kinda careless in how you've been treating him. You come off as cold and distant whenever Martin's around. Huh? Wait, what's with the sudden questions? Like I already mentioned, I'm not some obedient little kid of grandpa's anymore. You seriously need to tell him to let go of those crazy nostalgic memories from way back when. It's time to get real and move on, you know? I'm not saying you have to give Martin some kind of VIP treatment. I'm just asking you to show a little kindness every now and then. But honestly, whenever grandpa tries to talk to you, it's like you barely give him the time of day. And when he took a spill in the garden and messed up his leg the other day, you didn't even lift a finger to help or show any concern. Man, seriously? Who's got the time to deal with useless old people like Martin? Look, since you're the one who stays at home, you're basically the only person in our family with some free time to take care of him. I mean, what else are you good for if you're just lounging around at home all day and not doing anything? Hey, there's no need to speak about me in that manner. Do you even realize that I'm the only one who actually spends time talking to Martin in our family now? Oh, come on. Can you just zip it? I'm exhausted from work, so spare me your nagging about petty stuff. Just focus on your own business and handle the housework for me. I want the entire house to be squeaky clean by the time my dad and I get back from work. Oh, and don't forget to dedicate some serious time to cleaning Martin's room. He's been smelling so awful that no one wants to come within a mile of him anymore. Hey, Rebecca. It's your mother-in-law here. Everything cool back home, dear? Listen, we might be running a bit late today, so you and Grandpa go ahead and have dinner without us, all right? Wait, when you say we, do you mean my husband and father-in-law are coming too? Where exactly are you all heading today? Wait, did you not catch any of that? We're actually planning to build a totally fresh house for ourselves to live in. That's why we thought it'd be good to go out for dinner and talk more about our plans for the new crib. You know, when it comes to a brand new house, there's so much to consider. 
We got to think about the location, the type of house, the interior and exterior design, and all that jazz. Build a new house? I'm not sure if that's really necessary. I mean, everything seems to be working just fine in our current place, right? Plus, the air around here is so fresh, and the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. On top of that, Martin has a ton of memories in this house, and he's really attached to the place. What are you talking about? Our current house is, like, 50 years old already. The layout is all wonky. It's a pain to navigate, and it's so far away from my husband's workplace. So, instead of wasting cash on repairs, wouldn't it be way smarter to build a new house in a more convenient spot? Well, I guess you might have a point there. But honestly, nobody bothered to clue me in on this. I was completely left in the dark about the whole situation. And from what I can tell, Martin hasn't been informed either, because he hasn't mentioned a word about it to me. Oh, my bad, sweetheart. I totally forgot. Your father-in-law and I actually had a chat with Brian about this yesterday. You were probably busy doing the dishes or something, so you missed the whole conversation. It's okay, Tina, but building a new house is kind of a major thing, you know? Don't you think it's important for our entire family to come together and discuss it, instead of just the three of you? And most importantly, did you even ask Martin what he thinks about all of this? Wait, what are you saying? Why bother asking for Martin's opinion? Of course he's going to be on board with this. I mean, he's getting older by the day. It was lucky he only had a minor injury last time, but who knows what could happen in the future. So I figured, why not build a new house that's accessible and hassle-free, just in case we need to take care of him? Oh, alright. I understand. You know what? We could totally plan the house in a way that puts Martin's room right in the middle making it super convenient for everyone to take care of him. Once we settle in, Martin will be the star of the show, no doubt. And if we ever need to, we can even hire a professional caregiver to give him the best care possible. Well, now that I think about it, it's actually not a bad idea at all. I have to admit, it's really heartwarming to see how much you care about Martin. I'm sure he'd be absolutely thrilled to hear about all this. Absolutely, Rebecca. What are you even saying? Martin is my father-in-law, so it's only natural for a daughter-in-law to take care of him, don't you think? Martin has always been so kind to me since the day I joined the family. So building a new house where he can enjoy his golden years in peace is the least I can do to show my gratitude. That's really sweet of you, Tina. Since it's a house for all of us to live in, should I also contribute my share to the construction costs? I just want to help out in the best way I can. Oh, you? Contributing to the construction costs of the new house? Ha ha ha! That's a good one, Rebecca. We all know you're a stay-at-home wife. And let's be real, you haven't exactly been making any significant contributions around here, let alone financially. But hey, no need to stress about it, dear. Martin will handle everything. If you really want to, you can throw in your two cents. But let's face it, your spare change probably won't make much of a difference anyway. Wait, what? I thought we were all going to chip in for the building expenses of the new house. You can't just expect Martin to foot the entire bill and not even bother to ask for his input like that. No need to make a big deal out of nothing. I promise I'll include Martin in any money-related decisions, all right? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some serious planning to do about designing my new dream house. Catch you later. Rebecca, did Martin spill the beans about his massive debt to you? If that's the case, then we're in some serious trouble, aren't we? Oh, you mean his debt of $1,820,000? Yeah, I got wind of that too, not too long ago. From what I know, Martin had become a co-signer for a loan for a friend's company, right? No kidding. It's true. 
And now, with his friend's company going down the drain, Martin's stuck with that whopping debt. Can you believe it? How could he be so careless? He shouldn't have gotten himself into such a reckless situation. Now, who's gonna handle that ginormous pile of debt? Do you think they're gonna come after a house that's still in the works? You know we're in the middle of building our new family home, right? I actually think the house will be all right. Did you hear anything from Mr. Davis, the company's lawyer? He informed me that since the house contract has already been finalized and it's under Harold's name, there's no risk of it being taken away. Phew, thank goodness. That's a huge relief to hear. I'm so glad we went with my idea and put the house in my husband's name instead of Martin's. Oh, by the way, what about the company? Does Martin's debt have any impact on it? I already mentioned this before, but just to reiterate, it was signed in Martin's name, so there won't be any issues for the company. If you want more information, you can always reach out to Mr. Davis directly. Wow, that's a huge relief. There's absolutely no problem at all. <laughs> I can't help but laugh out loud about it. What a weight off our shoulders. But Tina, can I be honest with you and ask you a question? Well, of course you can. What is it? Tina, I have a suggestion and I'd like your opinion. Considering Martin's overwhelming debt, what if we consider giving up the new house to help him repay what he owes? It seems fair, don't you think? After all, he's the one who solely covered all the expenses for the new house. What in the world are you going on about? Did you lose your marbles or something? Look, this debt mess is all on Martin and it's got nothing to do with us. So why should we go out of our way to help him pay it off? We're not dumb, you know. Tina, can we please have some empathy for Martin? I mean, seriously, don't you feel any compassion for him at all? He was genuinely shocked when he found out about the dead. And let's not forget, he's in his 80s. It's not good for his mental well-being to go through such a tough situation. Let's try to understand and support him during this difficult time. Hold up, Mrs. Know-it-all. Enough with the nonsense already. Mind your own business and stop trying to dictate what I should do, got it? So why don't you just stick to your lane and handle the housework for me? That's pretty much the only thing you're good at, right? Hey, Rebecca. Remember when I specifically asked you to keep an eye on Martin? Did you actually do what I told you to do? Do you even realize that he's been nothing but trouble for us lately? It's been a rough week thanks to him. I do my best to watch over him. But you have to understand that I have other responsibilities around the house, too. It's not like I just sit around doing nothing, you know? Can you please try to be more understanding of my situation once in a while? Huh. Don't act like those household chores you've been doing are some kind of monumental task. They're merely child's play. If your only responsibility is to manage the house and take care of Martin, and you can't even handle that, then seriously, what exactly is your role in this house? I told you, I really am doing my best. However, if Martin's health is seriously deteriorating, I believe it's time to consider professional care for him. Sometimes it's necessary to reach out to experts who can provide the specialized support he needs. Oh, here we go again. You're always trying to shift the blame and avoid taking responsibility for your own comfort. Did you see the disaster Martin caused in the kitchen yesterday? It was a total mess. I'm aware. Martin's behavior has been quite unusual ever since he found out about his massive debt. It's definitely had an impact on him and how he's been acting. He's getting more and more unbearable, and honestly, I'm reaching my breaking point with him. You won't believe what happened the other day. I actually tried to be nice and asked if he liked his dinner. And guess what? He threw one of the most epic tantrums ever, like a little kid, and snapped at me saying, Who are you calling Grandpa? I'm only 50. You have no right to call me that. Can you believe the nerve? I'm sorry to hear that. It's definitely true that Martin has been acting a bit off lately. Sometimes he forgets my name or asks about his meal right after he's already eaten it. It's worrisome. 
And I can't help but think that his condition might be related to that massive $1,820,000 debt. Is there any way you can try to convince him to see a doctor? I've tried to take him to the hospital a few times, but he flat out refuses. I don't want to push him too hard because I'm afraid it might hurt his feelings. Especially since he's not completely forgetful. Nah, he doesn't gotta go to the hospital. That old dude needs to be thrown out on the streets ASAP if he doesn't start acting better soon. We can't have a loony like Martin roaming around our place anymore. Who knows what wild stuff he might pull off next. Listen, Brian, you're acting just as cold-hearted as your parents. It's painfully obvious to me that you couldn't care less about your grandfather, am I right? All you guys do is make jokes and laugh at him. You don't even seem to think about taking him to the hospital. Martin is your family, for goodness sake. Can you please show him a bit of concern at the very least? Oh, come on. Why stress about some old geezer who's got limited time left on this planet anyway? Oh my god. It's seriously mind-blowing that Martin used to be some big-shot chairman. Now, he's just acting like a total moron. Look, I'll sort things out and get him settled in some kind of homeless shelter by the end of the week. That way, you won't have to deal with that bonehead anymore. See how thoughtful I am? But I thought Martin was going to live with us in the new house. I believe his condition can improve if we provide him with the right treatment. I mean, he always seems aware of everything happening around him. He's not completely oblivious, you know? Oh, believe me, it's just a matter of time before Martin starts forgetting everything. I bet he'll be wandering around, drooling, or even causing harm to us, the ones looking after him. You know what? Just the thought of it gives me the creeps. Martin's nothing but a total pain in the neck now. Oh my goodness! I can't believe you just said that about Martin! How could you utter such hurtful words? You are fully aware of all the hard work and dedication he has put into our family throughout his entire life. We should be grateful for all that Martin has done and show him the respect and appreciation he deserves. Say no more, Rebecca. I've made up my mind and there's no changing it. Martin is heading to the homeless shelter. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Way to go, Rebecca. Looks like you've got all our stuff packed up, huh? No worries. The relocation company will be here soon to give us a hand in hauling my things to the new house. Oh, I was just wondering if it would be helpful for me to start packing not just my belongings, but also Martin's? Nah, honey. What's up with that? You seriously think you and that creepy old geezer can move into my new house? In your dreams! <laughs> huh? Are you saying this for real, Tina? Oh, absolutely. Since Martin's sticking to his guns about not going to a homeless shelter, you'll have to hold down the fort at the old house and handle that stubborn mule. Besides, Brian's already made it crystal clear that Martin can't crash at the new place. Got it, love? No need for any extra baggage in our shiny new abode. But I've noticed that Martin's condition has been improving steadily day by day. He doesn't cause nearly as much trouble as he used to, you know? Hold up. No buts here. Look, I may be your mother-in-law, and you better believe you're going to do as I said, alright? Starting now, you and Martin are going to shack up in the old house. That means you get to play caretaker for him and his ginormous debt, too. Ha ha ha! Well, I guess you've already settled into your role as a useless housekeeper, so this shouldn't come as a shocker, right? Anyways, my husband and son are waiting on me, so I better jet. Catch you later! Wait a minute. Tina, please listen. You can't do this to Martin. You can't simply leave him behind like this. Good luck with the debt repayment and live in care. I'm out of here. Hey, Rebecca, are you there? Answer me. I've got something super important to ask you. Yep, I'm here. What's up? If it's about our divorce, I already sent you the papers with my John Hancock on them. Did you sign your part yet? Nah, it ain't about that. Is Grandpa kicking it with you? 
I swung by the old house, but you two weren't around. I know you put it up for sale, but seriously, it ain't worth a whopping $1,820,000. There's no way Grandpa can pay off his debt with the cash he got from selling the place, right? Is that why he pulled the trigger on that decision? What do you mean? What decision? Let me talk to Grandpa. My pops has been trying to reach him nonstop, but no luck. That scatterbrained old man has pulled off something wild and outrageous. And what exactly did he do? Stop playing dumb. He must have spilled the beans to you, right? He sold the company's stocks to the executive director, which made he became the largest shareholder. After that, a shareholders meeting and board meeting were held, and my dad was dismissed as president. Well, what's the big shocker? From what I gather, the executive director is beloved and admired by the entire company. Martin's a smart cookie, so maybe he figured it was wiser to pass the torch to the executive director. Nothing too out of the ordinary, if you ask me. What? This is straight up illegal. That sneaky executive director must have conned the senile old man into selling those stocks. I'm going to take both of them to court, no doubt about it. Brian, listen up. There's something you gotta know. Martin isn't having any memory issues. In fact, he's looking sharper than ever, if you ask me. Huh? What is that supposed to mean? Look, let me break it down for you. Grandpa had his doubts ever since your mom started talking about building a new house for all of us to live in, including him. So, he cooked up a scheme. He acted like he had dementia to test how you and your parents would handle it. And just as Martin predicted, you guys showed your true colors real quick. One after another. And what did you do? You were so eager to cut me and Martin out of your life. Whoa, wait a sec. So he was playing sick this whole time? That sly old fox. And you. I bet you were in cahoots with him, trying to pull a fast one on me and my parents, huh? Nah, you got it all twisted. I swear, I had no clue about Martin's plan. He had me completely bamboozled. You want to know what he told me? He said, to fool the enemy, you gotta fool your own crew first. And there you have it. But Martin can't just give the company to a complete stranger like that. It doesn't make any sense. My dad and I are his family. Well, he didn't just randomly pass the company to the executive director, you know. Even after retiring, Martin stayed in the loop with updates from Mr. Davis and the executive director. He saw firsthand how you and your dad were mishandling things. You disregarded the employee's input, prioritized your own interests above theirs, and indulged in lavish expenses on the company's dime. Now you see why Martin made the call to leave it in the hands of the executive director, right? What? I can't believe it. He got me completely fooled. But what about his massive debt of $1,820,000? It can't just magically vanish into thin air, right? Well, that debt is gone now. Martin had been, indeed, a guarantor for a friend's debt, but he also owns personal assets that even exceeded that sum of debt. In fact, after stepping back from the company's operations, he had invested in real estate and made a considerable profit. Wait, are you serious? Martin's been secretly raking in the dough without me knowing? So he's been squirreling away cash for himself, huh? Talk about being selfish. I'm not done talking, Brian. So, the friend was the son of a benefactor who had helped Martin when he was young, and Martin felt the need to help him out. Since the countryside land that the son owned was going to be developed into a resort, he was able to sell it for a high price, so there was no need to take on the debt. See? There wasn't any problem at all in the first place. No way! Why didn't you tell me the truth earlier? If you had clued me in, we wouldn't have left you and Martin in the dust. Do you know what happened to me and my dad? We were both denounced by the company. Well, I don't want to rub salt in your wound, but please be mindful that there's also the mortgage on the new house. Hold up. What mortgage on the house? What are you talking about? Grandpa was supposed to cover all the house's expenses. No strings attached. Haven't you pieced it together yet? Let me jog your memory about what Martin said back then. When Tina brought up the house expenses, Martin laid down a condition. If it's a house where everyone, including me, will live. In other words, if that condition wasn't met, he wouldn't shell out a single penny. I bet your dad simply assumed that Martin would foot the bill, so he didn't even bother scrutinizing the documents before signing, am I right? No, this can't be happening. Do you have any idea how much that new house cost? 
how the heck are my dad and I going to handle the mortgage now that we lost our jobs at the company? Please, Rebecca, talk to Martin and ask him to help us out with the house payments, or we're going to lose it all. Listen, I messed up, all right, but give me a shot to make things right. I'll bring you and Martin to the new house. We can get married again, and we'll all live happily ever after as one big crazy family. Sorry, but seriously, it's like way too late for an apology now. So, enjoy shelling out for the mortgage. Goodbye. Hey, Rebecca, please, just hear me out for a sec, all right? I'm head over heels for you. You're my one and only, and I want everything to go back to the way it was. No kidding. Rebecca, can you please let me know if you're there? Please take me in, Rebecca! Subsequently, my ex-husband and his parents faced the unfortunate consequence of losing the house they had built due to their inability to meet the mortgage payments. Now, they live in a dilapidated apartment that's more than 50 years old, struggling to repay the outstanding loan. Brian and Tina had been reaching out to me separately, pleading for us to live together. But that's simply not feasible anymore. Thanks to Mr. Davis, the divorce was officially concluded, and measures were taken to ensure that my former father-in-law and ex-husband were excluded from Martin's inheritance. Speaking of Martin, he has purchased an old yet charming house in the countryside, and we now reside there together. He assured me that I needn't worry about living expenses and could choose to live wherever I pleased, but I made the decision to remain by his side since he's the only closest family I have left. I have now become Martin's adopted daughter, and I am committed to taking care of him until the very end if anything were to happen.